Hello everybody in the second lecture of the topic of economic and financial crisis. In this lecture we will discuss describing business cycles. We start with the definition. What is the definition of a business cycle? or the two parts, recession and expansion. We have a definition of NIPER, the National Bureau of Economic Research. They define a recession as two or more consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth and an expansion is two or more consecutive quarters of positive GDP growth, which means quarter data should be available to be able to determine if you are already facing a recession or expansion. However, this type of data could not be available for some of countries, except in some recent years and this could explain why we can find for some developing countries where they are suffered from lack of data there is a very rare and a few researches about business cycle however this is a very common field of research in economics for developing for developed countries we can see in this figure how the business cycle is looks like we can see recession recovery we goes up and down we have two turning points peak and trough the peak of an expansion is a point in time at which the level of GDP reaches its maximum before the start to decline. Thus, the peak of an expansion dates the beginning of a recession. The trough of a recession is the point in time at which GDP falls to its lowest level before it begins to rise again, meaning that a trough dates the beginning of an expansion. This will be very clear in the graph to the right hand side. As we can see that when we reach the peak, we start in recession. When we reach to trough, we start in recovery and expansion. This definition is that a lag exists between getting data and making decision. Output must be failing for at least six months before Nipper will declare a recession. This is because of the lack of data. And this is one of the things that we cannot solve. As long as collecting data is already taking a very long process and consuming a lot of time. Another criticism of this definition is that it ignores cross recessions or periods of positive but below average growth. The problem here is that a period of growth that is low trend or the long run average GDP growth rate is generally regarded as a recession by public, as public believe that this time 
is recession because the previous time or the years before or quarters before this time they watched a high relatively gross rate of GDP but not technically considered as a recession by economists because economists are stuck to the definition we mentioned for for Nippur there is no formal definition of a depression so an old joke say that the recession is when your neighbor loses his or her job a depression is when you lose your job which means that in time of depression the crisis will touch everyone in the society no one is out of this and everyone will suffer in this graph we can see that what happened to the real GDP growth in time of recessions we see that in time of recessions there is a decline in GDP growth and in some cases it is reached up to negative 11 in this table we can see the timing of US business cycles and here we can see that time of peak time of trough contraction expansion cycle trough to trough duration and months and at the end of this table there is averages for this period there is six basic business cycle facts these facts are important to understand the business cycle business cycles are not cyclical what is the meaning of this the length of the previous business cycle is not a reliable indicator of the length of the next business cycle which means that we cannot expect predict or anticipate the next length of the business cycle depends on the previous or historical data about the previous business cycle and there is no two business cycles even they are followed each other similar even in the period of this business cycle the differences is very clear it is exist not only just for lengths but also for reasons and for consequences second business cycles are not symmetrical which means they are asymmetrical to explain this we can mention two points here output changes tend to be much larger during recessions than they are during expansions which means even for one business cycle there is no symmetric between recession and expansion if you just speak about the changes in output however we know that in time of recession output expected to decline as opposite to what could happen in the time of expansion recession tend to be shorter 
but with sharper change in GDP. We mean a sharp decline or negative growth. Wild expansions tend to be longer but with more gradual change in GDP. For this reason, for this gradual change, we expect expansion to extend for more than recession. Number three, business cycles have it changed over time. To explain this one, let's see what we have in this graph. In this graph, we have average duration of expansion and recessions for different countries. We can see that for USA, the duration of expansion by months on average is about 45 months, while recession is about 15. For Canada, it is 35 for expansion, 15 for recession. Japan is about 55 to about 13. Germany is 75 for expansion. 25 for recession. France, UK smaller than Germany, but Italy is greater than both of them, where we can see that expansion is extended to about more than 62 months on average, while recession is about 15 months. Spain is extraordinary case. Expansion could reach to 90 months, while recession is less than 13 months. Belgium, Netherlands, Ireland, Luxembourg, all of them is already between 30 to 53 in recessions and between 15 and 20 in recession. Average for all of them is about 51 expansions in months and recession is about 15. Here we can see that monthly percentage increased and decreased in industrial production during business cycle. And we can see that what happened, the growth in time of expansion and decline in time of contraction. And we can use the same principles for analysis we mentioned before. But here we can see that Luxembourg has the highest decline in contraction. The lowest here could be Germany, while gross expansion is at highest in Luxembourg and Spain. And the minimum for France and UK and also Germany. For the Great Depression and the World War II expansion dominate all other recession and expansion. GDP fell by 50% between 1929 and 1932 while unemployment rose to peak of 20% in 1933. 
For this reason, we call this time is a grid depression. The components of GDB exhibit much different behavior than GDB itself. We mean that the behavior of investment, durable consumption, and net exports are highly volatile and it change more than output over the business side while non-durable consumption and government purchases are stable and it change much less than output over the business cycle now we can check what we explained before in this table let's look for what we have here for a minute just concentrating about what happened for average share in GDP as a percentage and average share of fall in GDP during recession as a percentage and to the left hand side we have component of GDP it is divided into consumption investment net export government purchases consumption is already divided between durables non durable services investment is already new residential fixed non residential changes in inventories we can see that the highest share for non durables and services in time in case of consumption for investment fixed non residential is the highest share and this is a double of new residential net export is negative and small government purchases a fifth of the total gdp but if we're looking for average share of fall, we can see that the highest is the change in inventories, which represent 0.6% in GDP. But this is very important and the critical for the time series, especially when we speak about the business cycle. After this, we can see fixed non durables After this, we can find durables of consumption, so that investment, it looks the most affected by the business cycle. Especially important are inventories, which account for less than 1% of GDP but more than 40% of the changes which mean declines in GDP during recession time. Inventories are also a leading indicator of the business cycle turning points because a change in inventory could refer to the stage of the cycle. Government purchases are roughly a cyclical and not very volatile. Net exports are slightly counter cyclic, meaning that net exports tend to rise during recession and offset some of the fall in output. This is primarily because exchange rate tend to fall during recession decreasing the price of exports and increasing the price of imports the last point is the business cycle are associated with 
biggest changes in the labor market. For sure, this is an expected scenario. As in the time of the business cycle, the impact is very clear in the labor market. Unemployment is a strongly counter-cyclical and the changes in employment are much larger during recession than the change in other inputs into production. We reach it to the end of this part. Thanks.